Need some help on GED geometry? Well, you're in the right place. Now look, I know that you'd rather not be doing this geometry. You'd probably rather not be studying for the GED at all, but my goal in this video is to save you time and save you frustration by laying out a checklist you can follow that shows you exactly what you need to know for GED geometry to maximize your score. So like I said, I know studying for GED math is a drag, but we're gonna try to make this as painless as possible. And if you're new around here, hi, my name's Parker. I'm the founder of Test Prep Champions, and I love helping people pass the GED. And if you want more advice and videos and tips to help you pass the GED, make sure to hit subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate it. So let's start with plane figures. So you'll need to be able to identify the following plane figures. The rectangle, the square, parallelograms, the rhombus, in the trapezoid. So you need to be able to identify them, but you also have to know a little bit about their properties. So here's one big key tip here. So you need to know that the interior angles of any four-sided plane figure add up to 360 degrees. So you may be given one of these figures and they may take out one of the angles and tell you to figure out what the missing angle is. So to do that, you'll have to know that the interior angles of any four-sided plane figure add up to 360 degrees. So you'll also need to know about triangle properties. So we can classify triangles by their side lengths and by their angle measures. So when we classify them by side lengths, there are three different names we give to these triangles. So the one name is the equilateral triangle. So you need to know that for an equilateral triangle, all of the sides are equal and all of its angles are equal. So for an isosceles triangle, you need to know that two sides are equal and two angles opposite these sides are also equal. Additionally, you'll need to know the scalene triangle. So for a scalene triangle, no sides are equal and no angles are equal. So in addition to classifying triangles by side lengths, we can also classify them by their angles. So you'll need to know that a right triangle has one angle that measures 90 degrees. So you also need to know about acute triangles. So an acute triangle has angles that measure less than 90 degrees. And then for an obtuse triangle, you need to know that there's one angle that's greater than 90 degrees. All right, so for that acute triangle, know that the angles measure less than 90. The right triangle has one angle that measures 90 degrees. And for the obtuse, know that one angle is greater than 90 degrees. So you may be given problems where you're shown triangles and maybe you're either given angles or given sides, and you, have to, you may have to identify what type of triangle it is. So keep that in mind. And here's another tip here. So for triangles, you need to know that the interior angles of any triangle add up to be 180 degrees. So also, since we're on the topic of triangles, you'll need to know that how to use the Pythagorean theorem. So you'll need to know what the hypotenuse of a triangle is. So basically the Pythagorean theorem applies when you've got a right triangle. So again, a right triangle has a 90 degree angle. And so you'll usually see this represented as a little thing in the corner of the triangle. It looks like a box. So the side that's across from that little box type thing is the biggest side of the triangle. It's what we call the hypotenuse. And you'll definitely, definitely need to know how to solve problems with the Pythagorean theorem. That's a really big topic on GED math. So make sure you're comfortable with solving problems using the Pythagorean theorem. They may give you a question on the test where there's a ladder that's leaning up, a, up against a wall, or maybe it'll be a pole or something like that, but you can expect to get some word problems with the Pythagorean theorem. There's no guarantee, but a lot of test takers have told me that this has came up on their test. So just keep that in mind. Mind. So you'll also need to know how to work with perimeter and area. So the perimeter is the distance around a figure and to find the perimeter you just add up the sides. Now there's formulas that you can use to find the perimeter but really the formulas are just having you add up all the sides. So also you need to know how to calculate the area. So you want to know how to find the perimeter for squares, rectangles, and triangles. And you need to know how to calculate the area for squares, rectangles, triangles, parallelograms, and trapezoids. 
And as we're going along here, if you find any shapes and you're not even sure what they look like, that would be a good starting point. So for example, if you don't know what a parallelogram looks like, you can put it into Google Images or check out one of my other videos that I'll link to down below. So you definitely need to know what all of these things look like in addition to being able to solve problems with them. So another note about area is that area is always, it's measured in square units and the area is the measure of the space inside a flat figure. So you also need to know about circles and circle problems are also fairly common on the GED test. So you wanna know the basics of circles. So you wanna know what the circumference is. So the circumference is the distance around the circle and you'll need to know how to calculate the circumference. You'll also need to know how to find the area. So the area is the space inside the circle and you definitely need to know how to calculate the circumference of a circle and how to calculate the area of a circle. And you may even get a question where they give you the area and they ask you to find the circumference or vice versa. So definitely know about circumference and area. You also need to know about diameter and radius of circles. And like I said, circle problems that come up on the test a lot. So definitely know these circle basics and you'll be, you'll be set for a lot of the types of problems that you'll get. So you'll also need to know how to find the volume of rectangular prisms, cubes, cylinders, spheres, pyramids, and cones. And so these types of questions are for the most part pretty straightforward because you'll be using formulas. Although things can get a little bit interesting, especially when they throw some word problems at you, but make sure that you can calculate the volume for these shapes. And like I've said, I do have a video on this topic as well that I'll put a link down below in the pinned comment eventually. So also you need to know how to calculate the surface area for square prisms rectangular prisms, pyramids, cylinders, cones, and also spheres. So make sure that you can do this stuff. At least know what the formulas are. You don't have to memorize them, but know what the formulas are, know how to use them. So also you need to know how to solve problems with combined figures. So what I mean by combined figures is they'll take different shapes, like maybe rectangles, triangles, and they'll put them together here and you'll need to know how to solve these types of problems. So there are basically two different strategies. So you may be asked to find the perimeter and all you do is you just take the combined figure and you just add up all the sides. Now you may also be given a combined figure problem where you have to find the area or the volume. So the way you do it, so let's say that you're given the area or it tells you to find the area. So what you need to do is look at all of the individual parts and you need to find the area for each of those parts and then you add those all up. So the next logical step for you is to check out my video on GED math, four-sided plane figures. It's going to help you get started with improving your GED math score by mastering GED geometry. This is Parker from Test Prep Champions wishing you the best of luck on your test prep. Good luck. Thanks for watching.